evolution of uh, storytelling. Um, about aspects of um, how it starts. It might be just some kid saying, how come the turtle has a shell and nobody else does? How come the bear is so big but doesn't have a tail? How come rabbit's ears are really long and doesn't have a tail at all? Some woman probably says, I don't know. Go ask your grandpa. He's sitting over there. But don't listen to any stories about grandma that he tells you. So child goes up, hey, how come the skunk smells? Oh, this is why I know. Tell this story. That's basically how it evolves. Um, because of this, uh, I was talking with uh, Hastings Shade Jagesa. He's no longer with us. But um, Hastings was sitting there because he was a storyteller as well. <clears throat> Loved Hastings. We were sat there and we'd have these discussions at the Heritage Center. And he was talking about storytelling. And he says um, one of the things that he enjoyed the most was the fact that when the ice storm came through a few years back, knocked out all the power around here. Some people went with like uh, 14, 16, 18 days without any power. Hit the smaller communities. When it hit the native communities around here, most of them, the elders just pulled out all the stuff that they'd had for years, wood stove and stuff, fire, for too long hair, there's food. But because there were storytellers around that area, they would sit there, they'd gather, and they'd start to tell stories. And he said the most amazing thing happened was that all the kids in the area knew they were storytellers, but because they didn't have anything on their phones or TVs or anything else, they came and they sat there. And they said before too long, and the whole community was gathered around those houses of the storytellers, and they were sitting there listening. And they got to hear stories from their grandparents and everybody else tell basically life histories from them to them so they could hear this. And it's basically, it's basically how it used to be. We'd all gather together and they'd share all this. And he said what was really amazing, what he enjoyed the most, was the fact that when the power came back on, he thought, okay, that's it. And they'll go back and they'll be back to their games. And they did. They took off. They started playing with their games and this and that. But when it got evening again, they sat there and they got their fire going. Those kids started walking by and said, we're we going to do stories again tonight? And they go, uh, yeah, yeah. And so they kept coming. Six months they kept coming in the evening to listen to them. So they got to hear this huge wealth of culture just based on that ice storm. And because he talked about that, he says, well, these stories, they're influencing these kids. It's really good, but uh, we have all these old stories. Maybe we should start making up some new ones. So I came up with this one. At one time, just see the rabbit came crawling out of the burrow and says, I'm thirsty. I want a drink of water. Rabbit came up. Rabbit saw nothing but a big cloud of dust because all the animals were running. And rabbit says, ooh, that's bad. And rabbit takes off and starts to run. Catches up with the first animal, this turtle, and says, turtle, why are you running? Turtle says, I don't know. I woke up this morning. Big squirrel landed on my head. Took off running. Let's go ask squirrel. So they run. They catch up with squirrel. And they say, squirrel, why are you running? Squirrel says, I don't know. I woke up this morning. Wolf went by. Let's go ask wolf. And so they run up. They catch up with wolf. And rabbit says, wolf, why are you running? Wolf says, I don't know. I woke up this morning. Bear knocked me down. Took off running. Let's go ask bear. So they run. They catch up with bear. Bear, why are you running? Bear says, I don't know. I woke up this morning. Deer went past me. Let's go ask deer. So they run up. They catch up with the deer. Deer, why are you running? Deer points ahead and says, look at the trees. They look ahead. All the trees in the forest have pulled the roots out and all the trees are running. And rabbit says, ooh, that's really bad. So they run. They catch up. And rabbit says, forest, why are you running? And forest says, I just felt like running. And rabbit stops and says, run, forest, run. And rabbit went home and went back to bed. And the moral of the story is just because everybody else does it doesn't mean you have to do it too. There's a sculpture on a, a wall, and it's at KTK restaurant, and it has these horses on it. And I looked at it, and she goes, they're the horses. I said, yeah, it's a gorgeous sculpture. Yeah, I wonder where they're going. And something popped in my head. I said, Ted, where are you going? I don't let's go ask Bill. Bill, where are you running? I don't know, let's go ask Charlie. She put her fork down and says, Charlie, Charlie horse. Oh, she goes, you got to do better than that, Mr. Storyteller. You got to tra tell traditional animals. So I said, okay, bear, where are you going? I don't know, let's go ask, let's go ask squirrels. Squirrel, where are you running? I don't know, that's turtle. Tur Rabbit, why are you running? Forest, where are you going? She went, oh, no. I said, yes, no, yes. I said, it'll work. And it does work if you've seen Forrest Gump. Uh, my goal one day is to have Tom Hanks running right beside me. And he's the only one I'm going to give that line where he says, I just felt like running. And it's going to happen. Uh, last time I was in L.A., Tom Hanks was filming uh, three miles away from me. So getting closer, it's going to happen. But it works. And usually I pull that story at the end. I'll tell that story because by then I've had all these animals talking, the trees are talking, the stones are talking, the mud dogs are talking. And by then everybody's suckered in, basically. They're waiting for this and then pow, I hit them with that. And you can hear this collective, ah, oh, God. So, but it works really well.